Hey photographers, today I've assembled a panel of experts in the field to discuss the future of the photography industry. Why are sales declining and what would we recommend? On today's panel, Paul Chatto, who you will recognize from his... Well, well, you'll recognize him. Now, as with any duo, one of us is the thoughtful straight man, that's Paul, and then I say something funny to make Paul laugh. Right. Okay. Now, <laughs> so is there any question that camera sales have fallen off a cliff? And is it just phones, or what's the problem with the camera industry? Well, uh, I think, uh, as we discussed prior to this video, just as a setup to it, I think we've uh, come to the point where all the cameras are good. That's and, true. I, and I think that's really the biggest problem. There's really no challenge for anybody using any modern camera to take a decent picture. Right, and in fact, any camera from four or five years ago is plenty good to do 95% of the things. The and features that are being added are very specific situations for very demanding uh, photographers. Right, and I, the cameras, no matter how good technically they become, that still does not uh, uh, you know, change the fact that you still need a good eye, you still need to know about composition, uh, you should know a little bit about color science. I mean, there's, there's uh, you know, things that make a good photographer right. different from a bad photographer. I'm not even going to say a professional photographer because I think that's a dishonest uh, label because... Uh, oh, that's why I said demanding. Yeah, I no, no, I specifically chose that word, not to say Because if you're doing wedding <laughs> photography, you're not doing brilliant photography. You're just trying to get in and out with, uh, without getting uh, killed by the bride or the... Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, or the mother-in-law. That's right. really yes. your only job right, right, right. is a uh, is fa protection. photographer. Pr protection is, is required. So why are phones way more interesting to people than cameras? Why, why don't people respect the camera any longer? Well, what, what, what do you think? I, I mean, mean do, are there too many camera manufacturers? I think there are now. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we've come to the point where we're, we're going to see some blood in the water. Pentax, I think, has stopped manufacturing cameras haven't they announced so that uh, that accounts for them never sending me a review <laughs> unit. Like they started promising me one in January and I just got an email saying that maybe I could have one next year <laughs> <laughs> so yeah maybe, maybe maybe I should have seen the right so, on so the there's that there. and, but, and I, but there are more that you know should be in trouble Leica should be in trouble right. Hasselblad I mean uh, or is there still room for very specialized companies like phase one and Hasselblad uh, well, no, wow. I mean, there's always going to be enthusiasts yep. who really love their, their brand. Uh, I don't know how many cameras Leica ever sold, like, period. <laughs> right. But uh, At that uh, price? You know, and, and I don't know whether the digital versions of the Leicas hold the same kind of romance that the uh, uh, old film true. ones uh, held. Right. I mean, let's not forget, I mean, a, a good film camera had a resolution of, what, 6 to maybe 10 pixels? <laughs> ten, they were Pixel? 6 to 10 pixels? <laughs> yeah. Right. Really? Yeah. And so anything that's 16 pixels plus, 14 pixels plus, I right. mean, you're going to be doing better than film. For, for right. me, uh, with all this talk about the technology and how good, uh, you know, the pictures need to be and HDR and uh, recovering shadow detail, uh, I just go back to my film days. Right. And if, if I can shoot with my camera better pictures than I did with my film camera, I am completely happy. Like, but I, that's a guarantee. The, and, and, absolutely. You, know, you were complaining a little bit about, you know, the auto features. I'd say the only thing that's left for a photographer to do today is to compose and to wait right. for the right opportunity. Everything else, you know, whether it's color science or whether whatever those things are, focus, exposure, the camera does for you, you don't have to worry about that. That is no longer a thing that photographers have to do. Well, I, I, but I, 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 <laughs> which is what makes the phone such a powerful thing. You can, you can cut out that part where I went. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. And uh, the challenge is that uh, photographers, maybe more than anybody else, have been gear whores like from the beginning of time? Oh, the whole gas thing. What do you mean? Gear acquisition syndrome. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. so from the first camera obscura, there have been gear whores. Yeah. Like, you know, my house is bigger than yours. I got a bigger hole in my, the side <laughs> and of my, in my wall, in my wall than, yes. than you have. And uh, now we've gotten to the point where some people are talking about... Uh, the know, first I, lurkers, I guess. Yeah, you know, those yeah. and, people sitting in their dark room watching what's going on and, and, outside. And that's never stopping. And now we've got to the point where uh, I won't tell, you know, won't say who it is, but they were talking about how when you really need a large picture, let's say, uh, you know, three foot, that you oh, we know really, who that you, is. Yeah, I'm not saying. So you, you need a, a 60 megapixel meg camera, yep. you know, minimum, because if people go up to your picture and want to see the detail, and my point of view is, if, if you're looking at one of my pictures hanging on a wall and it's properly lit 
and you're going to walk up to that picture to take a look at the details of it, you're an asshole. Well, and the same I mean, thing is true of people nuts. in art galleries who are you know, inspecting the brush strokes on there Van Gogh's and Rembrandt's. That's not the point. No, I, I like no. to sit back on the comfy chair right. and just absorb uh, you know, right. David's painting. I right. mean, uh, I think that's... That's how you need to enjoy photography. I remember shooting an ASA 400, on my ASA 400 film, and I blew it up uh, 30 plus inches, and I developed it in my bathtub. You know, the print was right. in my bathtub as yeah, I just yeah, went yeah, back yeah. and forth and back and forth. The grain was the size of hailstones, but it had emotion. Right. Yeah, it it was, looked right. great, it was neat, and right. part of it was accidental, and part yes. of it was I exposed it wrong, and, yeah. and it was a wonderful picture. Content always tries yeah, I, quality. Then there's the always, point. Yeah. Uh, so, so if, if you were a camera manufacturer, right. what cameras would be in your lineup? Like how many models do you need? Because my, my thesis here mm. is that there are way too many uh, models in every camera manufacturer's lineup. It's going to drive you crazy trying to pick one, never mind trying to, you know, analyze them across. There's no perfect camera, nope. but what, like if you were the product manager and, you know, the company executive said, Paul, you can have three cameras in your lineup. What, what would the capabilities of those three cameras be? How, how would you structure that? Okay, so that's simple for me. I'm a video guy. Yeah. But I like taking photo photographs. I right. used to be a professional photographer, but that's not really my uh, focus. Uh, I love Fine. video, so I've owned Lumixes for a okay. long time. But if someone Whoa, gave me a Sony, you know, a7 III, then uh, the deal's done. I don't need any more camera than that. Right. And, you know, if you go to um, Flickr and search for brands, iPhone. so there's no, so there's no question that iPhone's right. number one, iPhone, but then you one. get Canon, then you get uh, Nikon, then you get Sony, right. then you get Samsung, and then you get Fuji, and then... Wow. The, right. So does Panasonic even have a role in this industry well, at this point? They, you know, like you look at Google searches, compare Nikon to Panasonic, they are so low there, you really wonder whether they feel like they should be in the industry. Well, but should, never we, should mind, we talk about who, who do we think is go are going to die? No, no, I want, I want <laughs> to answer the first, oh, okay. the, the, the uh, last question first, which is what are the models? So for you, one that's focused on video, but has good still speakers. Correct. Right. So I would say I would have a basic camera, which is one that doesn't record video, one that has a mode dial with only two positions, one of which is manual, the other mm -hmm. one of which is auto. And yes, in the manual mode, you can set the shutter speed, you can set the aperture, you can set the ISO, you can uh, set the white balance. And I want on that simple camera, all of the controls to be exactly like the controls on an iPhone. I don't want a menu. Mm. I, don't, I don't want all of that complicated stuff. I want a touch screen where just like on a phone, you can adjust all of the parameters. So that's one model okay. in, in, in my lineup. No, uh, video, I'm not even sure. I, no, I'm, I'm going to remove video from that. And, and then I want a high-end camera, one that someone who is demanding and who, uh, you know, is prepared to take the time to customize, who's prepared to take the time to do all of the things that, you know, Sony's unbelievable 48-page menu offers. <laughs> you know, someone who wants all of that has that. Right. I, so that's the, the kind of super user, high-end camera. Right. So do you think uh, Sony's uh, menu system is what turns someone into a super user because it's so crappy that only a professional <laughs> who's willing to learn it becomes a <laughs> professional? Uh, I call it yeah. the Microsoft syndrome because uh, my point is that Microsoft created an entire industry with, uh, with uh, Windows 3 support by having people. such by support right. people because the operating system was so horrible that the regular person really couldn't support right. it and it created an entire industry. I think industry. the economy has never properly thanked Microsoft right. for all the job creation. That I they, completely that agree. They did. Thank you right. for, for creating such a wretched operating system. <laughs> but we I, wouldn't have, but I don't think that there's so Sony no, doing the same thing. No, no. no? Th I think for the most part, uh, people accept the uh, Sony menu for what it is and they don't <laughs> use 90% of it. Of they course. remember that their camera can do something, but they can't actually figure out how to make it do it. But, uh, and that's, you know, and, and it's kind of unfortunate because you have those features. But, but I think that there are a group of people who do, you know, study the manual, who do analyze the menus, who do create the My Menu that has all of their features and things that they like to use, and, and they do make full use of it. But I don't think that that's, uh, all of that stuff needs to get in the way of the average photographer, which is why the basic model. Then I would have a hybrid, which is the camera that right. you're talking about, which has good video features. Oh, sorry, that high-end camera, it doesn't do video. The, um, the or panorama. This doesn't doesn't or, like a make a black and white that just <laughs> shoots black and white and has almost no controls? See, but you're talking about a brand I know nothing about. Oh. 
<laughs> Sorry, I just read about it. Oh, well, well, I yeah, I could do that too. I right? watch really good photo vloggers. Right. <laughs> There must be some. Yeah, that's right. People I can learn from. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, occasionally, occasionally, occasionally. Yeah. So you don't know that camera? No. Okay. No. But I, it's an know, unusual. But it's an the, unusual camera. But my entry level camera, my basic camera, would have a switch that just says black and white. If right. You want black and white color mode. Sure, absolutely. Should still, you know, you should still have something that's, you know, normal and something that's like vivid and, you know, something that's black and white. There should be a few settings that you can. Just the same way that the phone offers. But I can't see how that's different things. from any of the new phones. Right. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're back to my first question, right. which is why do people prefer phones? Well, because you oh, have right. it. You've, right. It's, it's so, on. Right. You've got it all the time. But what you would prefer about a camera is a larger sensor and a selection of lenses. Right. That that is the advantage that the camera would have over the phone. Of course. Yep. Um, we've been saying that. And for it years. might have a viewfinder, although, you know, I look at a camera that doesn't have a viewfinder and I go, is this really a camera I could be happy with? And then I look at the iPhone, which does not have, or any other camera phone, which does not have a viewfinder, and I think, how much of the world is completely unaware of the need for or the use of a viewfinder? Mm. And does it really have a role in photography? Wow. Well, I like using a viewfinder only because I'm old school, plus I find that I can steady the camera in right. ways. Uh, I think uh, compositionally, I like using the viewfinder for whatever reason yep. versus, uh, you know, the screen screen at the back. There's less yep. shake. Yep. It's easier to find and follow something with yes. a viewfinder. Yeah. So I don't think uh, right. a nature so photographer, bird, the... birders aren't using the screen no. at the back. But the majority of people are now used to taking photographs without a viewfinder. Correct. Yeah. And so they're I taking vertical video. <laughs> which was a real pet peeve of mine. Yeah, but because my eyes are side by side. That's correct. My eyes are not this way. So I, you know, so this. Well, but before Instagram made it mandatory, I would literally go up to people who I. Personatory. I think we don't want this to be sexist. No, you're right. right. And uh, I, they'd be shooting some family video vertically, and I'd, I'd go up to them and I'd go, uh, "What <laughs> orientation is your uh, TV?" Right. Uh, oh. Ah. So you've had that and, TV and in your room. For what, 15 right. years of? And uh, how much of your family are you cutting off on the left and the right? That's right. right. Why is John Jr. not in the photo? But I'm a jerk, so I. I <laughs> Which I is do why stuff like you that. go for that kind of yeah. But I, and there's no point doing it now because Instagram is a vertical right vertical medium. Yep. So I hate that, it, but that's, that's just me. Uh, so phones now. Now okay. the iPhone 11 uh, uh, Pro and Pro Max. Uh, initially, I mean, the initial assessment was this is going to be the most boring phone that Apple has ever uh, produced, but the camera features really seem to have gotten some buzz. Right. I mean, that was interesting at the presentation. They really said very little about, about anything about else. The phone. They really just uh, the cameras. Uh, yeah, it was like ninety-five percent focus. But I think they were right on the photography features. They were right. Yes. Look, I, I, I mean, everyone predicted this was going to be a yawner. And I think it's going to be a huge success. Yeah, no, I, I'm feeling some uh, need to, you know, think that, uh, you know, I do need to break my <laughs> standard and review a, a phone. And, you know, it's just it's where so many people are today. There are so few people who I can reach if I'm talking about cameras. But if I was to review phones, I think lots of people watching that stuff. I think one of the things to review and examine is workflow for someone who's taking a bajillion photos on their uh, phone and manage. aren't backing it up or don't know where they are. They're in multiple places. I'm finding that whole part of uh, the uh, photo business right. a, a huge mess. Right. And I don't think Apple's doing a pretty good job with their photos app. No. Uh, it's an utter, yeah. utter yeah. mess. The more in photos of, you take, the worse it gets. Yes. Yeah. And, and then you have, let's, I've got four Macintoshes, various uh, you know sizes and, and and uses, and if you set them to share, then <laughs> bloody photos are yeah everywhere. Eating up I don't all want of them. Your, right, 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 right. And I yes. take business photos on my phone, and sometimes yep. I take personal photos on my phone. And I then there's the iCloud storage that runs out. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, so that uh, maybe photo that's, management would be. I don't know. Right. Is, that is could be far better. more important. I, yeah. I completely agree. Right. But I'm very excited about. I, you know, one of the things I really like about the new iPhone uh, uh, Plus uh, or Pro. I hate the word Pro. Is yeah. what makes the phone Pro? No. I, I, you know, I hate the word pro, <laughs> yeah. I hate the word designer, I hate the word executive. Uh, you know, all of these are bad words. I, I think to they should have called anything. it the iPhone 11 Turbo. 
another word. It's another word. Has that no meaning. Turbo like, cologne. Like natural. Like, you know, <laughs> turbo like, brazier. There's like, there's no, there's just no, uh, it has no meaning. <laughs> it has, that's exciting. Uh, no meaning after a period of time. But right. the, I actually love Would the fact that the size? lenses are here. <laughs> moves. We're, we're all getting older. We're all getting moves. But uh, uh, I love the size of those yep. three lenses on the back, as opposed to trying to hide it and right. make it foam like I think it's, uh, I think they're so cool having yeah. them so large. Yeah. They look like speakers. I know, that was my first, like when you look at it from yeah. the side in the, in the, the introductory shot of that video, like, it's interesting of course now, Paul, that we have spent most of the time Oh, talking about the phone. Talking about phones instead yeah, okay. of cameras. So, so what do you want, let's, let's get back on, yeah. okay. so let's, let's get back let's, on track. Let's get back on track. Is there a future for cameras or really are, you know, it's the few aging practitioners and passionate devotees who are going to be using cameras and, you know, the, the phone or the phone form factor or the phone func like functionality will take over. I think you're right. I think more so I all the time. Say? Well, I think the phone destroyed the entry level snap, uh, you know, the quick snappy yeah. cameras. I don't know what well, the Well, because it had were. the same size sensor. Correct. And, yeah, at that, once you had a phone, you already had everything that that camera could offer. And then I just see with computational photography uh, that we didn't even talk about that, computational that photography. Uh, smartphones are now just entering yeah. into the realm of the uh, SLRs. Right. Uh, I don't know how, but the question I guess you have is let's let's decide how far they're going to push in before they lose their ability to actually function as a professional device. Right. I don't know well, what that is. Well, because they're steering us because the camera companies too are steering us in a whole bunch of odd directions. Right, like, why is there any dispute about DSLR versus mirrorless? Can we, can, you know, ugh, can and what do you we mean? Not, well, you know, it, 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 it's an irrelevant issue that just muddies the waters for people who want to own cameras. Ah, but it does not muddy waters for manufacturers who want you to sell you another phone. You already have a decent mirrored camera, mm -hmm. but uh, now they want to sell, send you, sell you a mirrorless. Right. That's really what it is. It's really? marketing. It's like a 3D TV? Yeah. Think mirrorless cameras are the 3D TV? No, I think, that, no, no. Uh, uh, well, uh, no, I don't think, I think the 3D TV was completely, uh, a complete waste of time. But you can't deny that this mm -hmm. is where the future of the camera, the camera manufacturers is going to be, to move right. you out of mirrored into mirrorless. I don't yeah. see, you know. But if the, if the manufacturers who are doing mirrorless do not also enter into computational photography at the same, same way, Speed I think they're going to the be in phone, trouble. You're right. Because a lot of the things now, I think that we expect uh, lenses or some other sort of physical asset, shutter speed, whatever, some other physical aspect of shutter speed of, of the, the whole, com uh, bah. some uh, <laughs> computational photography will take over a lot of the physical aspects of photography. And those things will eventually provide more flexibility, more capability than a lens or a shutter or whatever it is in the camera today. So sports photography, probably not. Fashion photography, is some photographer going to make their name shooting only on smartphones? Yeah, yes, absolutely. 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 Yeah, I saw, that's 100%. I saw an edition of Linea uh, when my, uh, both my daughter and my wife were into fashion, where every single picture was taken with a red eye, where they did not change the, um, you know, uh, uh, they did not airbrush right. it out. Yep. So it had a phenomenal look. So all these f fantastic pictures of beautiful women in beautiful outfits, but they kept the red eye. And I thought, wow, that was a great artistic, um, yep. uh, artistic moment. Uh, what my, my biggest concern right now is that there are things that, um, creative decisions that uh, have been removed for us. So I did one wedding many years ago where I, I took four Instamatic cameras and I shot the entire wedding, even though good cameras were around, but I shot the whole <laughs> right. wedding, everything, with the crappy Instamatic, because right. I wanted it to look like a trailer park mishap. Right? I got, right. I got people yeah. throwing up in the bushes. I mean, yeah. the parents of the uh, groom and bride were furious with my pictures, because we didn't take one with them, you know, uh, cutting a cake together or anything right, like right. that. It was a real... But, yeah. And it, it, yeah, why is my son asked to shoot Super 8 weddings in Super 8? <laughs> you know, and, and no audio. I, you well, know, it why has not? A, I would do it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, there are people who want that, I don't know, is it a creative Retro? aspect? Yeah, but who want that style. And I think that's a valid choice. Yeah, and, and how do you make, and how do you duplicate that style on the uh, equipment we have? It's just too, too damn good. I don't know. Did I hear the lunch bell? I, I think so. I think uh, we should be heading off and uh, getting getting some lunch, actually. Right.
So, yeah. There you go. There you go. Is that good? Is that good? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for watching. If you have a problem that requires some expert advice, let us know. And post your civil comments and relevant questions below. I do promise to read and reply to all. So long. Don't don't look at the uh, don't look at your uh, your Atmos. I looked no? at I looked at it. Yeah? Sorry. Is that a bad thing? No, I think no. I don't know. We'll see.